In the case against Joyce Cohen, Miami police were hampered by lack of solid evidence. But one month after Stan Cohen was murdered, the investigation took an unexpected turn. A career burglar named Frank Maglione was arrested for a separate crime. He knew about the Cohen murder and wanted to strike a deal. We learned that he and two other companions assisted in this homicide and were paid to do this homicide by Stanley Cohen's wife, Joyce Cohen. Maglione knew things that only someone involved could have known. So it was clear he was telling the truth. But even this startling confession didn't assure Joyce Cohen's conviction. On the stand, it would come down to the words of a grieving widow versus the testimony of a career criminal. Feeling he didn't have enough evidence to get a conviction, Spear spent two years chasing the other men Maglione implicated. But they wouldn't crack. He had to rely solely on Maglione and the forensic evidence to prove Joyce Cohen's involvement. According to Maglione, Joyce met him and the others at a restaurant to plan the hit. Joyce had it all mapped out. It was supposed to look like a burglary gone bad. They were to arrive at the house between 2 and 3 a.m. and use Stan's own gun to kill him. Maglione's story had one nagging inconsistency, the time of the hit. Phone records showed that Joyce called 911 after 5 a.m., not 3 a.m. They also showed that her friends called from Colorado shortly before the 911 call, around 5. It didn't make sense for Joyce to wait two hours to call police. And yet, 3 a.m. is also the time Joyce gave in her second statement. What seemed like a possible slip of the tongue suddenly became pivotal to the case. Police suspected that Joyce may have waited in order to create her alibi. They followed that lead. They learned that a guest at a neighbor's house was awakened on the night of the murder by what sounded like gunshots. He recalled looking at the clock. It was around 3 a.m. The information supported Spears' theory. But even this report was nothing more than circumstantial. To truly determine the time of death, he needed the testimony of the victim, Stanley Cohen. Originally, the medical examiner had no reason to doubt the time of death, according to Joyce Cohen, and listed it at 5.30. Now, determining the time of death was more tricky. The body had long since been buried. All that remained were photos taken upon its arrival at the medical examiner's office. Hours after death, blood settles in the lowest portions of the body in a process called lividity. The pooling blood creates telltale red marks. From the extent of the lividity marks, a medical examiner can estimate the time of death. Seven by five centimeters. Joyce Cohen's lawyers hired an expert witness who requested copies of the autopsy photos. He determined there was no lividity when the pictures were taken, meaning the victim was killed shortly after 5 a.m., as Joyce originally asserted. But because the defense was viewing second-generation reprints of the photos, the subtleties of the images were lost. Testifying for the prosecution, the medical examiner went back to his original photographs. The lividity was apparent meaning the victim was killed around 3 a.m. Joyce had waited two hours to call the police, proving she was part of the conspiracy to kill her husband. Maglione's testimony put into question the time of death. The autopsy photos confirmed his story. The forensics work on the scrap of facial tissue further proved Joyce Cohen's connection to her husband's murder. At the prearranged time, Maglione and his team arrived at Cohen's house. 
she was awake and let them in. They already knew where to find Stanley's gun. They went to the bedroom. Shot him four times. Then ran out. On the way, they dropped the gun. Joyce picked it up, wiped it down with the tissue, and threw it out the window into the garden. She then perhaps blew her nose on the tissue and disposed of it in the far bathroom. Although it was never proven, she may have arranged with her friends in Colorado to call her, thereby establishing her alibi. Unfortunately, the friends called too late, or there was some confusion over the time zones, Colorado being two hours earlier than Florida. Her own alibi betrayed her. Joyce Cohen received 40 years for murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Frank Maglione received 10 years. The co-conspirators were also rounded up and received sentences of no less than 39 years. Mm -hmm.